Express. Today we are coming to you right from Nakuru County, that is Nakuru City, and we are coming to you straight from the Root Valley Institute of Science and Technology as we talk about matters to do with TVET in the education sector. Just how important is the TVET and what is the contribution to the entire republic? How are we preparing our students in the future, for the future rather, and also some of the collaborations and also an important aspect that is the Jitume program by the government we shall be handling that and on set with me we shall be having a success story from that she calls herself a master of trainers what does that mean we shall be having that discussion with her a little bit later but on set with me is Dan Mutai Daktari executive director Kabarak University TVET Institute Welcome on set, sir. And also Jen Wangui Kuria, who is the beneficiary of Jituma. Welcome on set. And uh, we have uh, Sami Chemoiwo, Chief Principal, the Rift Valley National Polytechnic. And we'll start with you because you are playing host to, uh, to us today. Now, Doctor, when we talk about matters to do with um, the TVET, um, it is a subject that when we sit today, we realize that the TVET continues to produce individuals who are ready for the market. And we look the world over, uh, we need skilled labor, and TVET is playing that role. So as we sit today, why is TVET important for this republic and the world at large? Because we are exporting skilled labor. Thank you very much. Uh, now, TVET is a, is a country. We, we have come out of a, a very difficult situation where we have shortages of employment. And uh, we went initially to the white collar jobs, ignoring what we call the blue collar jobs. Mm-hmm. And that is where the economy is. If you go to many countries, what makes a country grow is what products they produce to serve the market. And that's what we have realized as a country. And the whole globe is going in that direction. That is where we go to Tibet, technical vocational and education training, mm-hmm. where we go towards what we call Tibet. And the purpose is to train and skill. Actually, we are saying to skill the youth mm-hmm. for production for production, not necessarily management. Management, we have very few <laughs> skills, but we need to produce. And that's where we are heading to as a country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a Tibet, we call ourselves the key. Mm-hmm. We are the key to success in life. Mm-hmm. If we are able to skill our youth, both for local and international market, we will be home and dry. Mm-hmm. And we shall sort out most of our problems. Mm-hmm. We are talking of 68% of our population, mm-hmm. big youth. We need to equip them, retool them, make them have the skills. Mm-hmm. That is our target. Mm-hmm. And I come to you, Dr. Tari. Now, you lead an institution that started around 2021. Now, as we speak today, that's around four years of, of TV. That is Kabarak. Um, technical vocational training. Now, as we talk about the Kabarak TVET, um, what informed the decision of setting up TVET at Kabarak? Thank you. Um, Kabarak started uh, in 2021 to take the first uh, Tibet students. Um, as you are all aware that uh, Kabara community has a primary school. Mm-hmm. Kabara community has a secondary school. Kabara community has also a university. The only institution which was missing was Tibet. And um, because of the quality of training being offered at the university, at Kabara community in general, there has been high demand for um, Tibet programs to allow those who may who have been disadvantaged by the traditional education to undertake also uh, Tibet programs as they prepare. It, 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 it provides a, a, a pathway for those who may not have had um, the minimum qualification to take a university degree. However, uh, there is also a need in this region that uh, the the city of Nakura has been um, promoted, and therefore there is high demand for skilled labor workforce because uh, currently there is a lot of expansion in the city, expansion of roads, water services, sanitation, electricity, hospitality. Think 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 about. It anything technical if you 
and you know Nakuru is a central place. If you face north, you go all the way to Turkana, Lake Baringo, and you are all aware of the flamingos which uh, migrate from Nakuru, Lake Nakuru, to Lake Baringo. Look at um, to the to the um, south. We have Masai Mara, where we have also hospitality. We have tourists, and hospitality um, experts are also required. Think of East. Think of East Mount Kenya region. Think of um, uh, East also uh, Naivasha. There are quite a number of uh, sceneries there, and there are quite a number of hospital industries coming up. And therefore, we need qualified workers mm -hmm. to man and to run those programs. Mm -hmm. And we were talking to uh, Jane, who is considered to be one of the success stories from this institution. Um, and um, Jane, they call you the tra uh, master of trainers. What does that mean? And why are you being called a master? Um, thank you for that question. I'm a master trainer because I started as a tasker. I was promoted to being a trainer. Mm -hmm. And now I'm training trainers, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm a master trainer because I'm training trainers right now. And when you talk about you training trainers, this is under the Jitume program. So, mm -hmm. just what is the Jitume program that has been set up by the government? Uh, the government has really helped in Jitume program because it has offered the VDIs to all the TVET institutions in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And now the now the TVET institutions in Kenya they need trainers so that they can be in a position to train the youths in the institutions. And that's why now I'm training trainers from all Tibet institutions to go back to the ins uh, institution and train the youths over there. Have you graduated? Yes, I have a certificate. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, when we talk about matters to do with the Jitume program, uh, it has been set up here. We went through the incubation hubs that do exist here. We have the laboratories that do exist. And we actually even saw students in there doing, applying their trade. And uh, some of the lecturers that you're talking to are saying, you know, some of these students would say hi to you while going about their classes. But in the evening, they're washing their cars. That means something is going right when it comes to matters to do with Jitume. So uh, the, the collaboration for Jitume with the, the, the national government setting up such uh, such uh, initiatives in in TVET. How has that elevated uh, elevated the status of TVET, and how has that equally just opened new doors for TVET? Uh, thank you very much. You know, Jitume is uh, initially it's a government it's actually a government project, and it began way back on in 2022, and the purpose mainly was. How do we engage the youth? Mm. Because the whole world is uh, digital. And the government gave computers to institutions and gave uh, a, the internet connectivity so that we are able to train youth to work in the global market online. So you are in Kenya, you are working in, uh, in, uh, in the, you are working and all that. You know, people just found it to be a joke eh? when the mm -hmm. president said, tap tangle, you tap it and the mm -hmm. dollars came in. Dollars come in, yeah. yeah. she is a product of that. <laughs> when she sits here, she is a dollar and she earns yeah. the dollars. <laughs> so what happened is we moved with it as an institution. So we initially, we set up a Jitume hub, like any other college, mm -hmm. and we collaborated with the, those fellows who are in the industry. What we believed in is uh, for you to train to, you know, if you want to train a, a carpenter, for example, you must first of all be a carpenter yourself. Mm. So there is no way you can bring a fellow who, is, who, are, who knows something about carpentry and train a person to be a carpenter. It must be a carpenter. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we engaged those who are in the market, those who are doing various platforms on uh, online jobs. We brought them on board and we were able to train our youth, mm -hmm. our trainers and the students. It was open to all students, trainers, and the neighboring youth. Mm. And from there, we picked the best. So we went down to the top 10. Mm. Within uh, three months, the top 10 were earning over 30,000, 20,000 per week. Mm. And those are the fellows we picked. Mm. Now, when we had that success story, because we already had about 200 students who were earning, and others were actually from the neighborhood youth. So the question was, how do we make other hubs in the neighboring communities, in the neighboring institutions? Because many, about 116 institutions had, uh, had VDIs. Mm -hmm. But the problem was, 
how to use them. Mm-hmm. How do you, pro- do you do you engage the youth mm-hmm. in those maps? Mm-hmm. So the government came up with training trainers. So we teamed up with Kenya School of Tibet. Kenya School of Tibet had the pedagogy. Uh, Rift Valley National Polytechnic had the skill. Mm-hmm. So we had to combine the skill and the, and the pedagogy. How do you train a person mm-hmm. and then the skill which you want mm-hmm. to train? Mm-hmm. And that is where the master trainers came mm-hmm. in from. Mm-hmm. And uh, we started now preparing what we call now the Jitume Training Center. center. So the Jitume Training Center is separate from the Jitume Hub. The mm-hmm. Jitume Hub is where the workers, the taskers, mm-hmm. earn their money. While the Jitume Training Center is where we prepare the youth. The purpose is we separate the, those who are working and those who are training. Mm-hmm. Because we have 100 computers for, tr- for workers who are working 24-7. Mm-hmm. If you go there now, you'll find them working. Mm-hmm. They are earning their own money. Mm-hmm. Some are in class in the morning, in the evening they are in the, in the, in the labs. In the labs yes. So we separate the two with different connectivity, internet connectivity mm-hmm. with different uh, IP addresses mm-hmm. so that we are able to train those who don't have the skill. And uh, initially it was for training in the neighborhood. Currently we are actually training nationally. Mm-hmm. Today we were able to graduate 116 trainers yeah. from uh, 75 technical training institutions in Kenya. Mm-hmm who have been trained on how to manage and how to mm-hmm. train other youth. Mm-hmm. That's where we are mm-hmm. as an institution. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Chari, as, as, as uh, Chibu was speaks in terms of, uh, in, in terms of having you to make in place, uh, the national government coming through and making sure that this actually works and there is a curriculum that is working and all that. In terms of collaboration with the national government, uh, investing in TVET and uh, also just ensuring that the curriculum that does exist actually works for the benefit of the students that we are getting out of these institutions. How important is that synergy and collaboration between institutions. Um, Thank you. Um, In terms of collaboration, collaboration is uh, bringing all the expertise together Mm -hmm. for purposes of working as a team and for purposes of bringing the expertise. Um, When you get an expert from the industry, for example, collaboration cuts across. It's Mm -hmm. not only training institution alone, it also touches on the industries. So that you are able to bridge the learning, create a bridge between learning and the industry. Because we know the industry are moving faster in terms of uh, acquisition of technology. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, the training institutions uh, have a curriculum. However, this curriculum needs to be reviewed from time to time. Mm-hmm. But it is not possible to review it every other time. The only option is to collaborate with the industries and be able to bring in new technologies into the training mm-hmm. to enhance quality training and also for, 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 for the graduates to cope up with the new technologies mm-hmm. coming up in, mm-hmm. the, in the market. Mm-hmm. So collaboration is, is quite important. We institutions are not uh, well endowed with everything. Mm -hmm. There are those who are experts in certain areas. It's like music. Mm -hmm. There are those who are very good in in, in choir. There are those who are very good in traditional dancers. There are those who are very good in purely dancing. Mm -hmm. There are are those who are very good in um, being soloists. So it is the same thing in terms of uh, Tivet also. Mm -hmm. We require all the expertise in that area. Mm -hmm. And collaboration is quite important Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. We are all looking at developing um, uh, quality workforce mm-hmm. that will be able to um, uplift the economy of this country. Mm-hmm. The target is to improve the economy of this country, and by improving the economy of the country, we will we'll start by improving the economy of the families, of communities, and the economy of the country will go up. Mm-hmm. And therefore, collaboration means we need to sweep to clear any 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 anybody who um, has not had uh, a chance to train and be able to be trained it mm-hmm. also gives us give an opportunity to choose where to train mm-hmm. because there there are those students who are interested in um, blue economy then they, they they are free to move and train in in places where the training facilities are available. Yes. There are those who are in uh, agri-business areas, they can also move there. So by collaborating, 
one one advantage which we have seen in Tibet institution mm -hmm. is there is no time institutions have quarreled over student crisscrossing one mm -hmm. county to the other yeah. in terms of looking for 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 institutions to learn to learn yes mm -hmm. and i come to you jane jane uh, it, it it is uh, when we were seated in in the boardroom i i, I could overhear you speaking in terms of um some of the tasks that you undertake we know electric cars are coming and uh, that seems to be one of the areas that you are interested in and i uh, it uh, I was fascinated just to understand um, term, in terms of this Jitume program because most of the people think when you get into Jitume program is you're doing uh, assignments or what, but you're doing big things, you and Elon, on the same league. So just take us through uh, some, <laughs> some, some, some of the tasks that the Jitume program has actually uh, opened up these doors for you. Um, the first one, we do 3D tasks mm -hmm. and 2D tasks. And when I say 2D and 3D, I don't, I don't want your mind to go back to school. I want you to focus <laughs> on the Jitume program because there are two different things. And when I say 2D, 3D pro projects, uh, you see there are, there are upcoming, uh, there is up upcoming of self-driven cars. Mm -hmm. And those self-driven cars, they need people on the ground to control them mm -hmm. because they cannot do without a human being. Mm -hmm. Also, we have Amazon mm -hmm. and we've seen uh, big companies like uh, like Amazons, mm -hmm. they work with robots. Mm -hmm. Those robots, they have to work with a human being. They cannot be, they cannot control themselves. Mm -hmm. So we here on the ground having this Jitume program, we are the one who controls the robots and the self-driven cars. Sometimes you get a task of uh, maybe it's a farm, there's a pick of uh, maybe tomato that you have to say whether it is ripe or it is stage one, stage two or flower. Why? Because the, the thing that is going to, to, to pick the tomatoes in the farm are the robots mm -hmm. and they don't know the, what, what is ripe mm -hmm. and what is not ripe. Mm -hmm. So you have to. To, to be very accurate in what you're doing because whatever you're doing, you are controlling the robots in a farm mm -hmm. or in the company doing mm -hmm. some work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we does. So Chimago, 2D, 3D, robotics, airload, electric cars, self-driven cars, all that is happening at, at a laboratory in your institution. As we sit here today, TVET uh, is celebrating 100 years. Um, and also, this institution has existed for 45 years. Now, in terms of uh, what next for the TVET institutions across the country, equally, as we sit here, we also know that you are just waiting for that charter that will make you be the national polytechnic. So the next 100 years for the, uh, for the Rift Valley National Polytechnic, how does that look like? What's the vision like in terms of continuing to bring the next Elons that are sitting next to you? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, what they are doing is what we call AI jobs, uh, artificial intelligence. intelligence. Yes. So they are collecting data, they are used for programming and all that. And uh, that is where the world is heading mm. to. And we have to be realistic. Most of the, tas the tasks which are being done will be, most of them will be mechanized or automated. Mm -hmm. So the physical jobs we have been doing will be taken over by machines. And that is why we need to retool our youth, to skill our youth. Not only for the local market, it is for the global market. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an institution, we are... Indeed, we are 45 years old. Mm -hmm. We are one of the institutions which are leading in the, in the, in the field of technical training. Jitume is one of them, mm -hmm. one of the examples. We are, quite, we are doing quite a number of things. Actually, we are a global institution, if you may want to know. We are, the, for example, we have been recognized by the World Federation of Colleges and Polytechnics in Sustainable Development Goals as we are award winners, gold award winners. We, in management, the, we, are, we, we have been recognized also as leaders in inclusion and diversity and uh, various other awards globally, mm -hmm. where we are competing with all the other institutions in UK, Canada, Australia, and all that. We are going to be awarded in indigenous education mm -hmm. in uh, Jamaica come September next year, this year in September. So what are we doing? We are setting the pace. We are working with the friends 
across the globe. We have colleges like Hamba College in uh, Canada. We are working together. We are trying to develop new curriculum and what's what we call CIBET. The new world in the next 50 years, 100 years, mm -hmm. is technology purely. And uh, that is why we come up with what we call a dual training. Mm -hmm. We don't want anymore to train people in the ground here and then tomorrow when they go to the market, they are learning new things. Mm -hmm. They are wondering what is going on. Then they are supposed to be retrained. We want a person, when the person is trained, is either competent or not yet competent. Mm -hmm. And when the person we say is competent, should be able to just walk into the industry and walk. Whether it is in Jamaica, it's in Canada, it's in uh, mm -hmm. Germany. And some of our students, for example, the other day, the government uh, was, uh, we were flagging off about 300 youth to go to UK. We have some of our youths who are working in, in Germany. We are others who are working in Canada. They are working in various industries. Dual training, when we talk of dual training, it's what we are actually doing is the institutions are not necessarily endowed with tools and equipment sufficient mm -hmm. to prepare the students for the market. Some of the equipment are found in the industry. So the students are trained in college and also trained in the industry. They take maybe three months in college, three months in the industry, training, not working, but training in the real, real environment. Mm -hmm. Now, we do that with the industry, but sometimes also the dual training is done in college. So you'll find that within the college, you have a production line, mm -hmm. which is real, so mm -hmm. that the trainees are doing the training and then doing that. For example, here in Arvist, we do comments mm -hmm. from our own production lines. We do bakery. We, have, uh, we make our own breads, our own products, we do our own milk, we do our own pork, mm. and the students are able to learn in practice. So when we talk of dual training, it's in the actual production line mm. and in class. in class. So we are able to do the two. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are moving to CBET because with the digital and online, mm -hmm. there's no room for asking a student to define things. You just tap, you know, the kid... <laughs> When you go home, the child knows more than the father or uh -huh. the mother. Because with the laptop, with the computers, with, with the phones, phones, you are able just to tap and ask the computer, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Or the phone. And it mm -hmm. will tell. In fact, sometimes it even gives invoice. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to be assessing the theory. Okay. We want to assess the skill. The skill. That is where we are heading. Yeah. And when we talk about matters to do with TVET, a lot is happening and a lot is changing. Technology, they say, is the way to go. We have uh, terms like uh, dual training. We also have the CBIT. What does, or did, what does it mean for the institutions? And that is why when we come back after this break, Dr. Tari will be breaking that down for us so that we understand when you talk about dual training. Uh, Mr. Chimowa has alluded to that, but let's just expound on that and equally continue talking about the successes that we have in this country. See you after the break.